I went to the Bringle Holy Institute course um, a couple of years ago and it was totally awesome. I, when I first heard about it, I got that um, feeling that God really wanted me to come, but being human, as you are, I needed a few other signs and, um, and they came. It turned out that my dad had attended the same course a few years ago and he lent me Samuel Logan Bringle's um, autobiography for me to read. So I started reading and I was just like hooked. I was like, I have to find out more about this guy, about the holiness course and how it can um, help me with um, my relationship with God. Um, with the holiness course, I learnt a lot about um, a new way of drawing closer to God, um, especially in times when, you know, life is stressful. How, where to look for God, how to look for Him, and everything. Um, and it, it was just an absolutely amazing course because when I arrived at the course, work had become very stressful and I was very burnt out. So I was, um, I knew the course, I was going to receive a lot of information, but because I was um, so, because my spirit was so eager, so thirsty to hear the Lord's word, Wow, the Lord just opened my ears and my eyes that whole entire weekend. He carried me through and um, he, um, yeah, and I just like absorbed in his presence that whole entire weekend. Um, so because I had, I was feeling I that I needed a break from work, I asked God for some direction um, as to where I could go next. And also, I'd come to the point where I just, I really, really wanted to know more about Him. Like just reading the Bible wasn't enough for me anymore. I had to know what did He actually mean um, in the Bible. You know, who were all these characters? There was stuff in there that I just didn't understand or could even relate to. And so I just sort of read over it and go, oh, well, God, that's obviously not for me, meant for me because we don't do that, you know, here in this country. So when I turned up at the Bringle course, it was a chance for me to find out more about God, but also to find out what else was would be, what else I could do at um, BCM. So I um, inquired about the courses that were on and as I was um, told about the courses, when I heard about the Diploma of Biblical Studies, my spirit just left. And I was like, wow, God wants me to do that course. One of the big things for me in the beginning was that the whole Bible was put into perspective for me. For the first time, from Genesis right to Revelation, I um, found out the whole entire story. And I was like, wow, this now makes sense. It, and even where we fit in now, today, we've still got a, you know, God still has a purpose for us. And we're a part of his overall plan that he has. Uh, for the first time in my life, I had, God was at the center of everything. He was in the conversations I was having with other people. He was in the classroom, he was in the video, videos I was watching, he was, um, I could share him with anybody and everybody and his presence was so strongly felt. I was just like, wow. And in my assignments that we were writing, it was all about God. Everything we were studying was all about God. And when we had to... Um, give our sermons or preach in front of the class, you know, it was all about God. It was, for the first time I, you know, properly experienced this is what it means to have God smack bang in the centre of your life. Because, you know, from there, everything just filtered out. I was like, wow, this is the world that you intended for us, God. It was just like amazing. Mm -hmm. um,
and one other thing that I learned, um, I didn't want to. Do, I did the preaching paper, and I absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. But in the beginning, I was very apprehensive, only because um, I have a, um, a fear of standing up in front of group of groups of people and talking to them. And so I'd made it quite clear to God at the beginning of the course that I would not be doing preaching. But God has a way of working on us and um, he knew that it would help me out and he had things to show me that I didn't actually was aware that I needed to be shown. And um, so I ended up halfway through the year because I thoroughly enjoyed the first preaching course that I'd signed up for. I had to um, take on that paper for preaching, preaching at the church, I can't remember what it was. Preaching practice. Oh, that's right, preaching practice. The preaching practice paper and wow, what an experience. That first time I stood up in church and preached to them, I couldn't have done it on my own. God was there holding me firm um, at the front of the church and he just spoke through me to everyone in the congregation. It was just, it was amazing. And from that experience, that one experience, it actually strengthened me, strengthened me up to do my second teaching, um, to do my second preaching experience, and then my final third one. And it actually boosted my whole self confidence up in like all areas of my life, like especially going back into the classroom, because I'd had a year out from the classroom. Um, when I came back to school, it was like, hey, I don't have to worry about anything. I've stood up at church in front of a hundred people and preached to them. And I couldn't even have done that on my own. It was only because God was there holding me up. Just, you know. Go for it. Do it. You'll have the most awesome year of your life. <clears throat> it is amazing. It is spiritually fulfilling. Uh, for me personally, it's been quite a big step, so I've never gone to uni, I didn't really enjoy school, like I was good at it when I was younger, um, then it got a little bit harder as I got older. Um, so there's been a part of me that's been quite stretched and challenged, and it's, for the most part it's been quite good, yeah, so stretching and developing a different side of me. So up until coming into study, I've been quite hands-on doing practical things, a lot of um, hands-on activities with people and young people. So this is developing me as an individual, as a person. And for the most part, it's been quite good. Sometimes a bit painful, but otherwise good. Um, I'm not a natural reader. I remember coming here for our interview and being quite challenged to read and read widely, um, so I've really had to develop some patience with reading and to not just skip over things that catch my interest but to dig a little deeper and it hasn't, been, hasn't always been a comfortable thing to do um, and there's some of the things that I've read that I won't ever reread and there's some other things that I've found quite inspiring and helpful to me personally and I can see how it will eventually help in my ministry, or well, our ministry. Yeah, it was quite. Yeah, it was a little bit freaky in the beginning because, like, I couldn't even type. So <laughs> to have to type up a two thousand word assignment was um, was yeah a little bit scary. But that was actually really good for me. And now, after having done those assignments in the first year, um, learning to type and and to get my brain thinking again in that way has been really good. And the 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 diploma of biblical studies has been a really good thing for me. Um, it's just enhanced like the experience and the knowledge that I already had and then this is now kind of added on top of it so it's been really worthwhile and, and it's really helped in my preaching because I've got a whole lot of more biblical theology and basis to kind of back it up with and the preaching classes were really good so I learned some real some new skills there so that was really good so um, last year was the study year for me and I even though it was really hard it was really good for me. I think there's 
a definite transition from being outside of training to coming into training and part of that transition involves um, developing an awareness of yourself and you, you almost have to wrestle with the new you when you're in this place so you no longer have responsibilities in ways that you may have measured your value in the past are not here, not present in this, in this environment and they don't need to be either. So for me, because I've been in ministry for 14 years and I've done a lot of running a core, um, I had a chat with David and he said that because of my experience, um, I wouldn't, it might not necessarily be that helpful for me to do the DIPSAM, which is the second year of training, but we talked about how I hadn't had much experience in a say a traditional core in the Salvation Army because I've been brought up in quite alternative calls. I came through Arrow Street Salvation Army, Arrow Street Community Church and then um, uh, found myself planted 614 Youth Services Corps and so I wanted to get some experience on what it was like being in a, in a core that didn't have a focus on just on youth mm -hmm. and so that's why we sent me to Lower Hutt uh, Salvation Army this year and that's been really good just seeing their community ministries, seeing their Overcomers program, seeing how they operate on Sunday and all the different facets of our, um, of our Salvation Army Corps has been, yeah, it's been really good. Uh, so last year we did the Diploma in Biblical Studies, so it's quite prescriptive, everyone does the same, I guess you could, would you call them modules or same topics? Uh, whereas this year we're doing the dip sam and even though we have eight different modules within those modules you have the scope and flexibility to investigate things that you're interested in um, and I've really enjoyed that part of the learning and developing quite helpful skills so coming up with a question that would motivate me to investigate it further but making sure that it will apply in ministry. So not just something that takes my fancy and will never be used or read ever again, but something that is directly transferable into practice. Uh, so some of my favorite topics so far have been living in community. And I think a highlight for me would be going out into um, like a community setting and seeing how a core operates and seeing what the life of an officer actually is in reality. So we live for nine days with an officer couple and see what they do every day and what kind of makes up the world of an officer. And some of it's quite intense. Um, but at the same time, they're just sharing as much as they can from their own personal experience and that would really work well for me. Whereas there's some other things that I'm thinking, I don't think I'd be able to do that the way they do and trying to figure out how I could shape it to fit. Um, another module that I've really enjoyed has been leadership, so understanding the classical styles of leadership and then moving through to a con contemporary style of leadership and what would it look like if things were shared, so if leadership roles were shared. And it's quite challenging again, but yeah, I'm drawn to those things. I quite like new ideas and new concepts and leadership, the module, has offered me those things. Well, one of the things that I noticed, like coming from um, a core and like being really busy in ministry and, um, and, and I was in a leadership position as well, so I had people that I was responsible for and I was kind of like the boss. And so to be able to kind of come here and just relax and not have that over me again and just hang out with people and like I know in the first year we just played heaps of tennis and... Um, you can, it's, it's a little bit like becoming a kid again, where you kind of to school and you just go and play. And sure, you've got your study side, and that is real hard and it can be stressful, but you've also got your fun side and you can hang out with your mates and you can have just good chats and you can, okay, you can just be young again. In, in one sense, that was something that I really noticed last year. And, um, and even just this year, it's just, I guess, there is a relaxedness that you can return to from being a student again. I call Faye like a hippie student. Um, 
we normally go lower and she's back here to do hippie student mates during the week. But um, it's, yeah, so I think from that side of campus life is, is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, where do you get the opportunity just to become a student again? So I think that was pretty cool. Dave and I and the rest of the cadets here with got quite a clear calling from God that we, this is part of our process, this is part of the calling is coming here, so we understand our own calling, whereas for our children, because we come here as a family unit, they don't have that security or that confidence. Um, so sometimes to, to understand why we are here and why we would choose this lifestyle for us, and say that campus life has been amazing for our younger children. There's just the freedom to go to their friend's house just up the road and they play freely in each other's houses and there's a park here. So there's lots of uh, different age and just to do so in a way that's safe. So it's a really safe environment here. And so I appreciate that about campus life. Um, and you do have to manage yourself well so there's times that you need to engage with people either in study or socially but there's also times when you need to take yourself outside of campus life and um, do something that gives you energy yeah so i'm quite an advocate for that doing things off site outside of campus life that's quite a big assumption that people think that we all live in the same house and that we have someone who does the cooking for us and our washing that's not true we each live in our individual units or houses with our own families. We're responsible for our own shopping and cooking and cleaning and raising our children. Um, so I think that's quite a, a quirky little assumption. And perhaps it happened in the past, but that's not how it is now. You're a fully functioning family in your own right. You just live in the same neighbourhood. Yeah. I mean, it can. I mean, it can be a bit frustrating at times too because you are. You're seeing each other in class all the time. You're seeing each other around campus. You're seeing the the, the staff and everybody all the time. So, you know, it's not all roses, and it does require. But even even within that, that requires you to sort of dig deep within yourself to not allow uh, yourself to become critical or or bitter or um, angry about stuff. And so, how you deal with that is kind of part of the learning experience as well. Because there is frustrations at college. I mean, just the fact that you go to, you sit in class, and you're in class from nine o'clock or quarter to nine to three o'clock um, every day, particularly in the first year. I mean, even though the education is great, it's still frustrating, and it's still, I would watch the clock for the breaks, <laughs> for when the break was coming, and then waiting for lunch, and then waiting for the three o'clock finish. So, um, yeah, that side of it can be challenging, but that's just something that you've got to go through to get out the other side. Mm. And if reading and studying hasn't been something that has motivated in you, motivated you in the past, then you really have to work at reframing how you're going to approach study. And there's ways to do that. So the tutors are most helpful. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you. So, um, if, what would you say to people who are thinking about coming to BCM, particularly as cadets? Um, you know, they've sort of thought through the call to officership, but the actual coming to BCM. You got any advice, any thoughts, any encouragement, um, any reminders that you might give to people mm. to specifically about coming here? Mm. I think it would be to make sure that you are called, because I think if you're not called, then you'll just get frustrated with it. And because I think if you've got the call, it comes with the anointing and then it comes with the provision and then it comes with the blessing, and so everything that you need to get through, even though it may still be hard, but there will just be this supernatural energising to help you through the tough times. So I think that's really important. And then the other important part is just being prepared to, to let go of who you are and to let go of, of your past and what you were and what you carried because now you're a student. And, and you've kind of got to do as you're told, and you've got to fit in with the discipline of the college, which can be frustrating. Um, but if you can come into that place within yourself, then you'll get the most out of it. Mm -hmm. so.